come around here. It won't take too much time. So like these are like a break up of the steps I do with my pieces. Uh, so this is my clay body, all five. And uh, I got all the recipe of my glazes and body there. I will just leave it there so, you know, you can copy this stuff, anything like that. So this glaze, this is the one kind of breathes into the body. Uh, crackle white is the newer ones. I don't use a cryo light on these, but fit on this 3119 has a higher coefficient of expansion. It shrinks and it cracks. But you can stain it and get like a, all the Chinese pot kind of texture. Okay. Uh, this is a regular white. I don't use white much, but that's what I use. It's very stable. All these are 5 to 05. This is the shiny one. And uh, this is a San Diego State Crow. The Crow raises many of my pieces. Yeah. And uh, I stain it. It's not clear with that opacifier, but it's still pass cut out the knees. Now, cone 05 is what we do our disc firing, first firing on. And uh, we could mix up some of these glazes and fire them along with bisque. Mm -hmm. So I know we're firing at a different temperature for most of the stuff, but we can also. Mm -hmm. We've got some, uh, we've got a red body that mm -hmm. uh, we could try some of these on. Okay. And uh, you can make this kind of glaze just adding, uh, tin is too expensive, like a, what opacifier you use? Pardon? What kind of opacifier? Pardon? I'm sure. Like, do you use a super packs or zico packs or? I say fast or? Uh, opacifier? My hearing aids and your accent are yeah. real, I'm sorry. Okay, um, so like if you add 50% of uh, opacifier ingredient that make your glaze is opaque or white, we use a deco packs, or make your glaze to crawl. You get the same kind of texture as my pieces up there at any temperature. Just test it, it may flake off. So somewhere 50%, you can go up or down, depending on the texture you like. Tin oxide does it, but tin oxide is so expensive. It's mm -hmm. like, I don't know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks a pound. Mm -hmm. use it. This isn't it, what do I have? Yeah, so this is a clear I use. And uh, I started using like, Commercial glazes, sometimes it's easier. So this is a regular slip I use, and that's my clay body. Show, excuse me, show me the word that, that I can't. Is it on this one? Uh, yeah, and Zeco Pax. Oh, Zerco, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I thought you were talking about uh -huh. when you were talking about tin oxide being so expensive. Mm -hmm. So like if you add Zacco packs on any glazes, it will make your glaze to crawl. You get texture. A uh, few other things. And uh, I played with this slip. Um, I adjusted in a way so that the slip kind of start to melt, so the hard slip becoming more like glazes. And this original recipe was, I think out of Bao Cushing's handbook, the guy used to teach at Alfred. 
And the original recipe has this fit, 3124. We, we have that. Okay. And as original, it's really dry. I wanted to kind of melt or flax a little bit. So I substitute 3124 with 3134. Mm -hmm. I think there's like 150 degrees difference between melting point of those two. I replaced the whole thing and it, it became glaze. So I replaced half of it, it kind of got nice, and I replaced a quarter and the three quarters. So I have a full version of the same, not same, but base recipe. So it melts in different degrees. So some of the pieces out there, I use all of them. I started with the harder one, the softer ones on top of it. So as layers and like top of the surface start to melt, but down here, under layer, kind of stays stiff. Uh, I, anyway, so it started with like a bare gray. I paint it. I think this is a black. And I use a pencil to put design on it. And then this part is the latex. It stinks. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, literally it stinks. So I didn't do it. I'm not going to do it here. It, it has an ammonia smell. Okay. But I just painted it with paintbrush over the, my design. So that's done. I paint the second layer, and remove it, and paint more on top of that. So uh, what do I have? So I get a blood on here. And I usually wait a day after I paint. So I wait <coughs> day to do this, and then paint second layer. And I peel the latex off, and then wait another day. I want my piece to be dry before I go another one. Otherwise, whenever I try to pencil in, pencil remove layer of the strip. So this is a terra sigillata. The only glazing, the glaze mixing they've done is just a mm -hmm. simple 80-20 uh, mm -hmm. raccoon glaze. All right. So really watery. Okay. It's a very easy to make. Uh, let's see. I can't even spell. Uh, probably two L's. These are two L's or one L and then two T's. So that's all I got in there. So 70% water, 30% bulk clay. You can use like EPK or any kind of white clay. And then 0.5% of dabum. It's like a water softener. Some people use a cow gum. And uh, mix them up in a bucket. Let it sit like a two, three days. Then what you're going to get is like heavy stuff sinks to the bottom. The top layer is like water like this. And the middle layer, that's this. And uh, I just add a pigment to it. Um, if without a pigment, it will be nice and shiny, white surface, like a sheen to it. Not gray shiny, but sheen. If you polish it, it will get even more smooth and shiny. Um, I'm not shooting for getting shiny surface. I want a nice smooth surface with easy control over. So, uh, I just added like a 10%, 5% of stain to this. And I'm just adding powder into liquid. 
So not exactly 10%, but as long as I keep the same ratio of liquid to powder, then I can get the same uh, result, or I can repeat what I want to get. Okay. So, so I get, again, rate expanded over the one color. All I do now is pin over. Some colors I have to do more. So that's where the work, no work, so latex is, that's where. So if I have time, or well in my studio, I just do something else, come back and the paint over, what's the door is. And besides these, I use uh, airbrush. I have a small spray booth in my basement. And I bought these hockey brushes in Japan. I like these better. Um, this is, I think, another Japanese brush, but I got this at Columbus Square. It's a little bit thicker. You know, this is thinner. Then I like these better for what I need. These. And I think this is like a three inch wide. I have wider ones, but this fits this container. That's the only reason I use these. If I have wider container, then I'll use those. Okay. Usually I wait for the slip on the latex to dry, but it just comes off. Okay. You can't do this with wax, but in a wax you can't really remove it. And uh, I get this latex from Axner the <coughs> store in Florida. It's very good. They only ship these during summer, or not summer. They don't ship this during winter. It freezes. But, uh, I got a gallon of this a couple years ago. It's gonna last for me mm. a while. And then I used to get this from a store in Nashville. I don't remember the name of the store down there. They carry a uh, pint size as well. And uh, this can be thinned down with water. It took me for a while to figure out what I can use to make it thinner. I guess water does it. Is that just one coat of the latex though? Uh, mainly, yeah. So that's the step. Okay. Then again, I'm gonna wait for this to dry, like overnight. Then put second design or lines in there. So that's this with pigment. This kind of tool comes in different shapes and sizes. Um, I have a few. I have way too many tools. 
but for now, this is the one I like. Did uh, you also get that from Columbus Play? No, I think this one I got from Bailey, New York store in New York. Columbus Clay Caddy is the one with like a plastic, like this kind of plastic. I got a cramp <laughs> <laughs> using it. Uh, my wife uses that kind quite a bit, but not me. So the dots on those pieces, all I did was, oops, just placing. And if I make mistake, I can use an exacto knife to and scrape it off. And each piece I make, I keep note of what did what I did in the slip wise. So unless I fire it, I can go back and uh, fix it, redo it. Sometimes people ask me, you know, if I want to do workshop, I'll keep doing this. It gets boring. <laughs> <laughs> so I can do this whole day, but I don't know if people want to look at me, at me doing that. Are you using any pressure all on that bulb, or is that just coming out? I'm using a little bit with my thumb. A little bit? Yeah. And uh, this slip is kind of thin. So make it easier. Sometimes I really have to squeeze it tight. That's how we do it. And you just keep doing until I'm done with it. Other things I did with these strips would be well, some of my pieces are a bit more texture than just that. Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> uh, so like that's the test. Uh, so I use this. Uh, like texture on your roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe on the side of your house. Did you make that tool? Where did I get it? Is it like one of the craft store? Uh -huh. <laughs> about it. The it's idea right is anything that works is correct, okay? Thank you. 
this if you want. It's gonna get. Now your pencil blinds, do they do you do anything to them or do you just let them fire it? I'll and just fire it. it. Most of the time, like a uh, carbon burns out. Okay. Some stays. But I'm not worried too much about it. Let's see, it's not dry yet. So like building up the texture using this kind of brush. Just go. Oops, going too far. And uh, that's a different color. So this strip melts a little bit. It's like a seven part thirty one twenty four. It kind of picks up the high end. like a sweeping the surface a little bit. And this strip has like a 21 parts of 3124, so it almost to the point of becoming gray. Mm -hmm. And then when this is fired, like a top layer, have a blue and getting soft like shinier than towards the bottom, yellow and uh, whatever. As a shades of blue getting softer and softer. Yeah, yeah I just keep doing this until I get tired of it. <laughs> but that's how my piece <laughs> progressed from like a bare surface to these or that. And this, and then after best I just put clear glaze or other glazes on top of it. So the process is very static. I just sit there, keep doing it, and I'm done. But again, those are the things I use. Uh, and these grades are very stable, so you might want to test it. But if you make it, it should work well. Okay. Let me. Uh, so this is done on the uh, non-disc fire plane. So all of no all most of the decoration I do on greenware as bond dry piece and. Uh, I guess that gives me more time to work on it. I don't have to wait for the piece to dry. Oh no, that's not right. 
I don't have to worry about piece getting dry. And also I have fairly good amount of time to do it. No, I could have done it forever. So let's see, do I, most of the time people do apply these on like weather hard piece to get a shiny surface, which I'm not really shooting for, so. Okay, and uh, I made maybe like a 20 gallon of that, or oh, I started with 20 gallon of this. I get maybe half of it as this. No. I haven't made that new batch for maybe like four or five years. So it may last forever. Yeah, I don't want to make clay or grazes too often. <laughs> I don't like cleaning up mixer at all. <laughs> so if I do it, I make a big batch and down with it. If was I make one batch or two batches, three batches, I still have to clean up mixer once. But uh, well, again, that's how I do it. Like, really, there's much to <laughs> process wise. And like I said earlier, I try to make it easier for me. So, everything getting kind of organized in a way so I don't have to do it a lot of work. And uh, again, trying to get easier tool to do. Things. Okay. Um, anything I can answer? Questions? Whenever you were cutting off the uh, <clears throat> the latex from the, the sort of like checkered one, mm -hmm. how did it like? Because you didn't cut around the whole square. How did it just go off like each individual square rather than fill off the entire thing? This. Yeah. That's how we Well, like whenever you paint it on, like before you. Filled it off like because you didn't like cut like like around each one whenever you filled it. Mm -hmm. Like how did it? Around here. Yeah, or like whenever you were filling it off, how did it know not to like take off more than one square? Um, well, it's not like you want to peel this off. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like peel off like any of them. Uh huh. <laughs> it just comes off the way I paint it, so as long as they are not connected. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm sure. Sure in okay. So, yeah, finding latex made it really easy for me. It took me for a while, what I could use to do this. Yeah. Wax was an option for what I want to do. And, uh, again, yeah, I think I found what I like earlier, so it kind of helped me. I didn't have to try too many different things to get what I wanted. And uh, so my piece is, uh, again, low fire, 05, 06. Uh, I where I teach, we used to do content reduction in the gas kiln. We used to have a salt kiln also. So I do those kind of temperature yeah. pieces, but I haven't really done anything seriously to do much. And then that's, a couple of years ago, we dropped from content to six oxidation. And then now, I kind of enjoy testing grazes at that temperature. So, um, one of the reasons I like working with this medium is there is some science into it. 
the grazing, the firing, kill, jazz, all the things, and uh, it's kind of fun to play with process and the medium, besides making actual pieces. And, uh, yeah. So these numbers we used to do it by pencil and paper, yeah. calculator. Now computer does it. So. So. The uh, main reason why we went up in temperature mm -hmm. when I came here, uh, they had maybe see the Amico jars mm -hmm. there on top. They had maybe three hundred of them, Ooh. and uh, that's three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And I said we can make the same amount of glaze yeah. for you know, 200. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even clay, I can make clay half the price of the whatever I can buy. Another thing too, uh, or my thinking was that with the students mm -hmm. spending hours and hours brushing the glaze mm -hmm. on, you can double the amount of mm -hmm. projects yeah. that they have experience doing mm -hmm. by having them dip it. Mm -hmm. I like the painting. <laughs> right? I, I, just, I like the really big detail. Also. But it takes a very long time. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the one thing I miss would be finding gas scale. Time consuming, mm -hmm. but it's fun. This is about the widest tip that mm -hmm. you can get for them. Yep. And uh, I think two or three company makes mm -hmm. the same kind. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. Do you use it just for dotting, or do you actually draw lines and stuff? Like that? I can't draw. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can't paint. Uh, it will work better than what we have mm -hmm. as far as drawing. Yeah. Do you ever apply the latex with that? Uh, I don't, but people do it. Do. Yeah, like doing like line with this and then graze over, slip over and peel it off. So you could use that with, uh, you know, raccoon and applying, mm -hmm. uh, but you, you, know, you have to clean the stuff up. Mm -hmm. If you don't, uh, they end up like these we got brushes over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, when I use latex on any of these brushes, one I keep a set of brushes just for wax and the latex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just dip these into a soap before I use, yeah, like liquid soap. Oh, okay. And then I can wash it off easier. What uh, brand of uh, wax resist do you use? Uh, whatever Chromas Cray sells. Pardon? <laughs> Columbus clay. Yeah. I don't know exactly what they are. They come in like a milk jar. So they must have getting it in a big gallon of it. Yeah. And then just make, oh, I mean, sell it by the gallon. And I know they use just a milk gallon from Kroger, one of those stores. <laughs> so I don't know exactly what they are. Right. Same kind of masking pro, uh, medium. They don't say uh, as latex, but one you can buy from standard. Like, it's like it's a red or orange color in it. It didn't quite work out the way I wanted. It, I had a hard time peeling it off, but they sell those as well, besides just regular latex. Is that a special kind of latex, or is it just 
really... I think for the painting, like they sell latex for like mold making, like mm -hmm. more chunkier, like cottage cheese kind of consistency ones. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think this is for like painting. How uh, thick an application of what the uh, glaze it crawled? Crawl? Probably two dips. Two dips, okay. Dip and twice. So like, that's one dip up here, like with a bit finer, mm. and two dips. Yeah. Another thing about the temperature that he's firing, his work, uh, your elements and your kill would last you approximately five to ten times longer than firing the Honda. <coughs> yeah. So uh, I have test piece like this for all the slips I have. Are, are you familiar with, uh, at, uh, years ago, at, or maybe in the last 10, at Winter Fair, this, uh, they brought this man over for me to meet, and he had a hat down over, and he's all bent over, very small. <laughs> and, and he has discovered and has put on the market a uh, a direct substitute for Albany, and yeah. it is in the Columbus oh. area. I mean, not in the Columbus area, Cincinnati area. Yeah, I, I don't know. The chemical analysis uh -huh. on what he said he has enough yeah. down there, and he's, he's milling it to a 400 mesh. Uh -huh. And uh, I have used it with my fake ice glass. Uh -huh. And it just works perfectly. Oh. And he's in uh, he's in the uh, Cincinnati area. Uh, I wonder. Um, Columbus Square sells some substitute. I don't know whether he deals. This guy deals with. Yeah. But so, this is better uh -huh. than any. Just I don't know if that's the one. Uh, the guy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he uh, he just I guess sells it from his. Huh. I asked him how much he had, and he said, well, enough to fill the arena that you put to have winter fair oh. in, and maybe in a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, it's a very I, good product. Uh -huh. if, uh, you know, I can't tell the difference when mm -hmm. oh, my glazes between, I have still have some real Albany, mm -hmm. and I can't tell the difference. Uh, and yeah. the chemical yeah. you know, analysis on it was, I mean, slightly off in a couple mm -hmm. of places. Yeah. All right. So, and process wise, it's very simple. And uh, a lot easier to control for me. And, uh, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh,